Hello everyone and welcome back to Exert Academy. This is Scott here from the Exert team and in today's video we're going to wrap up our three-part series called Mastering Exert. In the first video of this series I talked about how we can use Exert to discover your fitness. In the second video we built upon that and I explained the concepts that Exert uses to help you improve. And in today's video, I'll be explaining many of the real-time ways that Exert can help you perform. As I've done with the previous videos, I've broken today's content down into three main parts. In the first part of today's video, I'll be talking about your maximum power available, and specifically using that in real time. In the second part of the video, we'll talk about some applications of your MPA data. I'll be talking about some of the Garmin data fields that we've developed and also providing some insight behind Exert smart workouts and smart intervals and explaining why they're different than other workouts you've done on other platforms. In the last part of today's video, I'll be talking about many of the Exert specific metrics that you can view and use during your activities in real time. Now, I have a lot of content that I want to get through today, so let's get started. I first introduced the concept of MPA in the Mastering Exert Discover video. And in that video, I defined MPA as a dynamic value that represents the most power that you could possibly achieve at any moment in time. And when you fatigue, your MPA decreases. When you recover, your MPA goes back up. I talked about MPA as more of a post-ride analysis feature where MPA charts, such as the one displayed on the screen, help tell a story of your activities. For example, these MPA charts allow us to perhaps pinpoint the moment where you were right at your limit and you generated that breakthrough, or perhaps when you were on the limit and maybe got dropped during that, group, that uh, Zwift race. But today's video isn't about post-ride analysis. I want to talk about MPA in real time and how you can use your MPA in real time to make informed decisions during your group rides or during your Zwift races. For example, if your MPA is low, uh, you can make the informed decision to sit in on the group and allow your MPA to recover. Or if your MPA is relatively higher, you can get ready to unleash your devastating town sign sprint at the weekend cafe ride. I'll start off this section by talking about your real-time power in MPA, since knowing your power is only half the story. I want to talk about uh, something that's become affectionately known as the rainbow gauge in the Exert EBC app. Uh, and so I'll be explaining the color scheme of the inside part of this gauge, as well as the outer high intensity gauge and what that is telling us. For those of you with Garmin devices, I recommend searching for MPA and power in the Connect IQ store. This will allow you to view your MPA and color coded power data in real time. I'll point out that the coloring scheme between the Android EBC app, the Garmin data fields, the iOS based app, and even the post ride analysis in the Exert web app uh, are consistent. So what I'd like to start off with is explaining that color coding scheme. In this short demonstration, I'll be explaining the color scheme behind Exert's power data. On the left, you'll see the Android EBC app, and on the right, I've included screenshots from a Garmin device. Starting off at relatively low intensities, you'll notice your power data will be colored blue indicating that you are riding below your lower threshold power. This is a very aerobic based effort and would correspond to your zone one and two in a traditional zone based model. For most athletes, this will be approximately 70% or less of their FTP. If you were to increase the intensity a little bit, you'll notice the color shift from blue into green. This indicates that you are still below your threshold power, but you are now above your LTP. And in a more traditional zone-based model, this would correspond to your zone three, your tempo effort, as well as low zone four, lactate threshold. For most athletes, this will be approximately 75 up to 99% of their FTP. As you continue to increase the intensity, you'll notice the color shift into yellow, indicating that we are now at or slightly above threshold power. 
at these intensities and higher, I'll also remind you that your MPA will start to decrease. In the yellow region will correspond to your zone 4 lactate threshold, as well as your zone 5 VO2 max efforts. And I won't use percentages of FTP anymore, since those tend to break down above threshold, and instead will just correspond to your athlete signature. If we increase the intensity, you'll notice that the color will shift from yellow to orange. This orange color indicates that at this current intensity, you have less than 3 minutes until you reach failure. For most athletes, this orange region will correspond to your zone 6, or anaerobic capacity. And once again, if we were to continue increasing this intensity even higher, uh, you'll notice the color will shift from orange into a red color. Those of you using Garmin devices will actually notice a bit of a transition, uh, a gradual fade from orange into red. However, this red color is indicating that at this intensity, you have less than 30 seconds until you reach failure. So you know you're, you're getting close to your limit. But what happens if you were to continue holding that effort? Well, if you continue holding that effort, uh, wh what I want you to notice is uh, watch how MPA will continue to decrease. And once your power output surpasses your MPA, you'll notice the, the yellow, or sorry, the red color will shift to purple, indicating that you're above your MPA. And if you're able to sustain this effort for at least five seconds, you'll receive a nice pop-up notification from EBC or from the Garmin device that you've achieved a breakthrough. Next up, we have the HIE gauge, which you'll find in pink surrounding the multicolored power gauge. This data isn't available for Garmin devices, so I'm just going to display the EBC app for now. If you recall back to the first Mastering Exert video, I defined HIE as your capacity to do work above threshold. And as you'll notice on screen, when you pedal above threshold, you begin to use up your HIE. And as your HIE is depleted, your MPA begins to drop. And the higher above threshold you ride, the faster you burn through your HIE, and the faster your MPA will decrease. However, the opposite is also true when you ride below threshold. So after a hard effort, if you ride relatively easy, so with your power in the blue, your HIE and MPA will recover faster than, say, if you were to pedal with your power in the green, just below your threshold. Now, there's one other thing that I'd like to point out about the, uh, the rainbow gauge, and that's how the overall power gauge changes during a deep effort. I'm actually going to pause the, this, um, this video real quick, and I want you to notice how the purple part of the power gauge is collapsing the red and the orange regions towards your threshold. In many ways, this is similar to how MPA limits your power closer and closer towards threshold when you get fatigued. And as you ride below threshold and your, your HIE and MPA recover, notice how the yellow, orange, and red regions expand again and your, your purple region shrinks as your MPA goes back up. One of my goals for today's video is to convince you to download and utilize the various data fields that I'll be presenting in today's video and show you how you can effectively use them to help you perform. Before I move on any farther, I'd like to quickly talk about how you can utilize your MPA data in real time. Since this data field provides a real time value for the most power you can produce, it's a great way to validate your own sensations of fatigue. For example, if you're riding with a fast group of riders and you look down, you see your power's been in the yellow or it's been in the orange, and you notice that your MPA is decreasing, you can make an informed decision to perhaps reposition in the pack, try and draft a little bit more, uh, and conserve your energy. Any th these things will help you avoid getting dropped. On the other hand, if you're riding and you see that your MPA is relatively higher, you can be confident knowing that you have power available to you, and you can make that hard five-minute effort to generate a solo break, or uh, or push hard on that decisive hill or climb in your race, or simply save up every last watt of your MPA for that final short all-out group sprint. In addition to what we've already discussed, 
I also wanted to mention quickly how you can use your real-time MPA data to generate breakthroughs during your activities. This allows you to update your fitness signature without spending a day doing FTP testing or that dreaded Ronestad workout. I'll quickly mention the two main methods that you can utilize to generate a breakthrough on the fly. The first method I call pulling down MPA, and as the name suggests, this involves holding some effort above threshold and waiting for your MPA to decrease and meet that power. Once that's happened, you aim to hold this effort for at least five seconds to trigger that breakthrough. I'd like to uh, also point out that this doesn't need to be a steady state effort or a fixed power effort. And in fact, you can do any sort of uh, on or off effort, uh, such as the types of efforts you would see in the Ronestad workout. After all, that would be considered a, a breakthrough where you pull down your MPA. Now, the second type of breakthrough method uh, that you can utilize, I call pushing over MPA. And the idea here is a little bit different. Instead of holding a steady power and dragging MPA all the way down, we're going to bring our MPA down a little bit and then aim to out sprint it, see if we can surpass that MPA. So as you can see on screen here, uh, this athlete holds a relatively steady effort and then aims to out sprint their MPA. So this right here at the end would be that pushing over MPA. What I'd like to do now is quickly demonstrate what these breakthroughs would look like using the EBC app and the Garmin data fields. First up, I'd like to demonstrate a breakthrough that's achieved by pulling down MPA. And as we'll see from our athletes' data uh, in the EBC app, as they hold a steady effort above threshold, their MPA will steadily decrease. One cool feature that I'd like to point out using the screenshots from the Garmin on the right is that although this athlete is holding a relatively steady power, the color of that power will actually shift as this athlete fatigues from yellow to orange, meaning they're within three minutes of failure. And as they continue to feed uh, fatigue, the power will actually switch to red, indicating they're within 30 seconds of failure. Now, as we look at the MPA data here, uh, essentially what you're looking to do is hold that steady power until MPA comes down to whatever power output you're holding. If you're able to do that and hold that effort for at least five seconds, you receive a breakthrough notification from the EBC app or from your Garmin device. The second type of breakthrough that I'd like to quickly demonstrate, I call pushing over MPA and is represented on the right hand side of that MPA chart. Once again, I'll include some screenshots from a Garmin to help you visualize this a little bit more. Now, let's say that you're out on your group ride with uh, some of your buddies and you look down at your MPA data field and you see that your MPA is approaching 700 watts or 650 or 600 watts. And you're thinking in your head, I feel stronger than that right now. I, I can sprint for more than that. So to generate this type of breakthrough, you might want to shift up a gear or two Get out of the saddle and you're going to sprint and you're going to give it everything that you have for 10 seconds, longer if you have it. Now, if you're able to exceed your MPA, you'll see your power data displayed in purple. And if you're able to hold that effort for at least five seconds, EBC or the Garmin will award you with a breakthrough. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. The main difference here is that we're, we're sprinting above MPA instead of pulling MPA down to our power output. Now that we've talked about your real-time power and MPA, we'll move on and in part two of today's video, we'll talk about how we can apply this data in some meaningful ways.